feel like I have anything catchy to say for this intro. Um, so, Dylan, how about we just play the video? What's up, everybody? My name is Alyssa. I am a writer, editor, full-time 9-to-5 employee, and I'm currently building my own publishing company. And here on this channel, I just kind of talk about a variety of different mindset, tips, tricks, habits, vlogs that sort of show my entrepreneurial writer life as I build my business. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to stay positive when it feels like everything is going wrong, because um, right now, in this current time of point, point of time, in this current point of time, we're sort of going through like pre-apocalypse stage, sort of like worldwide pandemic, hasn't really been dealt with before that we know of, I don't think, maybe it has, whatever. But I've seen a lot of people, it's, it's taken a lot of people off of guard, off guard, wow my language today is all over the place. And I just kind of wanted to share some of the things that I've been doing to stay positive. I don't think this is the end of the world. I definitely think we're gonna get through this, but I think those who stay positive are the ones who are going to come out on top of everything. And so I'm just sharing what I've been doing to keep myself in a good mood and not like down in a deep, depressive funk. So. These are my, I've got seven tips, seven tips to stay positive when it feels like everything's falling apart. Tip number one is to develop a consistent exercise routine. You've probably heard people say this before, but like exercising is not just good for your body, it's good for your brain. It gets your blood moving, it releases like happy endorphins and things like that. So I found that for me, especially right now, exercising has been crucial. It keeps my energy up. I started doing it at the beginning of the day. Typically, it's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. That's kind of been a little, um, sometimes I'll do it midday now because my schedule has shifted a little bit since having to work remote. But it is something I try to do early on in the day because it just kind of gives me a fresh boost and it's, it's good for you, it's healthy, and it's addicting. The more you do it, the more you get hooked on that good feeling it gets you. So it gets easier to do as you keep on doing it. If you're not exactly sure where to start, I've gone through a lot of different workout programs trying to find one that works for me. I currently use an on-demand streaming service. It's Liz Mills On Demand. I'll put links in the description. I'm not affiliated or anything. This is the first workout program that has had workouts that I enjoy doing. I actually like doing them. They've got a wide variety of different things. My favorite are um, its body pump, which is like high reps, low weight sort of workouts. They have a Liz Mills dance one, which I really enjoy. They have this one called body balance, which is like a mix of Pilates, yoga, and Tai Chi which has been really fun and relaxing. If, like, I like doing that one in the middle of my work day when I just need like an 11 minute something to kind of get me in the groove again. It's been really nice. So if you have the funds to do a streaming service, that one is like $15 a month or something like that. And you get access to their whole collection of stuff. Highly recommend that. If you are just looking for free workouts, YouTube is a great place to do that. I really recommend Superhero Fitness TV for dance workouts, and she actually has some like weight strength workouts too, by Kira Lachey. I'll put that link in the description as well, but I will do her workout sometimes if I don't feel like doing a Liz Mills workout, and it's just, it, it's really, really good for keeping your energy up and getting your mind into the right place, especially if you do it first thing in the morning. Tip number two. Make a list of all of the people that are important to you, whether it's family, friends, clients. Make a list of everybody and keep in contact with them. This is something that as an introvert, I didn't do beforehand because I would just see these people like once a week or so and that was enough for me. But now 
I have come to realize that since other people can't see each other, and especially for those people who aren't introverts, keeping in contact is so important for them. And during this time, I think it really helps to kind of get out of your own head and think about how you can help serve other people, how you can help them stay positive. And when you find other people that are more positive minded, you just it increases the positivity all around. The term social distancing has been going on like crazy and I get the importance of like that but I don't think it's the right term. I did this post for my job recently talking about the difference between physical distancing and social distancing and now is the time to be physically distant but definitely not socially distant. We need to connect more and like again for pretty much the first time in history worldwide everyone has something in common and it's this virus like I just find that so interesting that no matter who you see out in the world or on social media you all have this one thing in common and that's just kind of mind-blowing to me but yeah stay social just from a distance but don't isolate yourself don't cut yourself off check in on your extroverted friends because they're probably having a really hard time especially if your state's on lockdown like California is we're basically not allowed to go outside unless we need to get something from the store or go to the hospital or like maybe if we want to take a walk but yeah we're, we're on lockdown here so staying in contact is super super important via means that don't involve face-to-face -face physical interaction. <laughs> Tip number three is to start your day intentionally. So you got to do what you need to do at the beginning of the day to set your mind up for happiness, joy, success, all that fun stuff. For me this looks like first working out because it gets my blood moving and gets me focused. After that I pull an affirmation card from the Mind Mastery cards deck. Um, this is the one that I have today that will show up. It, maybe it does. Okay, it says, well, I can't read it backwards. It says, I render more service than I ask people to pay for. My big service reflects my big rewards. I think big, I act big, I pray big. And then after I pull this card, I do a journal prompt. I create a journal prompt out of it. And I journal for about an hour. So that one I didn't actually make a prompt, but it sparked an idea for like, a related business thing that I want to add on to my kingdom book publishing company and I like wrote out the entire plan for it and what goes into it and I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it it won't be able to be in effect till after this quarantine thing is over but I have the plan for it so I'm super excited about that so affirmations journal normally I don't journal with any music on but lately I've added worship music to it because I just need that extra bit of positivity and then I read my Bible and that pretty much gets me in the zone that puts me in a positive headspace to get through the rest of the day that might not be what it looks like for you but you got to do what works for you in the morning because it is very important to start your day off right don't start it off looking at doomsday reports do not start it off with the news which actually I think that's the that's not my next tip but I'll just go into the next that that can be the next tip. Tip number four, turn off the news. So after I do this whole morning routine, what I've been doing is I get these emails from my local city government. I check the email for any update that needs, it, like, it just sends out like a very objective report about like what's going on. Like, this is shut down, don't do this, blah, blah, blah. That's really all I need to know right now. I don't need to be constantly looking up Twitter news feeds or figuring out how people feel about this and the first thing in the morning. I don't need those outside influences. They're not going to change anything that's happening. So when it comes to the news, just turn it off. Figure out what you need to know at the beginning of the day and then shut out all those other negative voices because they're not serving you and they're at the end of the day not going to help you with anything. Tip number five, hold regular dance parties. <laughs> this is I mean, if dancing doesn't fill you up with energy, this might not be the thing for you. But I found that especially working remote now in the middle of the work day, I hit a huge energy slump right around two o'clock. So I found out taking about 15 minutes to hold my own dance party with like really high energy music and just going crazy around the house with my dog and 
watching my cat as she runs away. It's, it really helps with that energy spike that you kind of need. And again, it's moving your body, it's getting your blood flowing, it's releasing those happy endorphin hormone, whatever things are that make you feel good. So, highly suggest that. If you need recommendation, recommendations for dance music, I have a whole dance break playlist on my YouTube channel. That's, that's the kind of music I like to jam out to. Tip number six is find podcasts that are positive and fill you up with hope or give you useful information. So just recently I started listening to, not just recently, I've been listening to it on and off for a while. It's the Build Your Tribe podcast by Shalene Johnson. Again, link will be in the description down below. But she just posted out this super helpful podcast for people who are being laid off, for people who are worried about how they're gonna put money on the table. Nope. Oh, they're going to make money to put food on the table. Most people don't just lay out money on the table, I don't think. Anyway, it was very, it was geared towards that sort of thing. How to make money quick, how to start thinking innovatively to get your finances going, to just make it for a couple months if that's what you need to do to get through this. And not only did I think that was such a relevant, helpful topic for right now, but it also sparked a lot of creative ideas in myself. I'm super thankful my job isn't in jeopardy, but um, I know a lot of people's are, and this is just a very good podcast. I'll link the specific episode um, to kind of get those gears moving and, you know, empower you to let you know that you can do whatever it takes. You can hustle for your seed and you can grind it out. You can make this happen and you are going to be okay. And this brings me to my last tip, tip number seven is to game plan for what you're gonna do when all this ends. Um, in one of the groups I'm in with a bunch of different entrepreneurs, one of the guys said that he'd been on a call with a bunch of business leaders and one of the tips that he said they talked about was, you know, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. And really, like, as a world, <laughs> We have the resources to knock this out in about 90 days um, and to come out of it in about 90 days, which is super encouraging, but it also kind of gets you thinking into the long term of, okay, this isn't going to last forever. What can I do right now that'll help me at the end of it to come out thriving, to come out on top, to come out with this new business idea? And I've seen some posts on Instagram about people like being current in the present moment and Maybe it's because I'm in a Neogram 3 or something, but I just can't do that. I'm making plans right now so that when life gets back when life gets back to being social, I don't think it's going to go back to being exactly the same as how it was, but when we're allowed to interact on our fullest capacity, what's going to be your game plan to come out ahead? Now is the season for planning because a lot of us are literally stuck at home. So start planning what you're going to do, prepare, and then when this is over, you'll be ready. So those are my seven tips for how to stay positive when it just feels like the world is falling apart, when everything is going wrong. Let me know if you have any tips that have helped you stay positive during this time. I would love to hear it and we can share the positivity. Also, I have been creating journal prompts for these affirmations, as I mentioned, and I have the, a lot of them on a Google Doc. If journaling is a habit that you would like to pick up and if you kind of want some structure on how to do that with journal prompts, also let me know about that down in the comments because I'm thinking if there's enough interest, I might release these journal prompts to my email list. So let me know if that's something you're interested in as well. That's all I got for today. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and if you would like to receive weekly videos about just my writer life and everything that's been going on and how I'm dealing with this building business, all that stuff. Go ahead and subscribe. Videos go up every Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, bye.